Good, Good morning. morning. Welcome, Welcome to McAllister Plymouth United Church. Welcome, Welcome to McAllister Plymouth United Church. Good morning. Welcome to McAllister Plymouth United Church. Christmas. It is good to be together today in celebration. The baby lies safely in the manger. Let us come and rejoice with him in gladness and song. The star shines in the sky. Let it guide our hearts and our minds into this time of worship and fellowship today and throughout this Christmas season. Come on, light in the darkness, love shines forth in the Bethlehem skies. See, all heaven has come to proclaim it. Hear how their song of joy arises. Love, love, born unto you, a Savior, love, love, glory to God on high. Love is born, come share in the Let us pray. O oh God, as the star invites us to the manger, let us invite you into our hearts and into our worship today. Our Advent journey is complete, and we now look forward to a season of celebration 
and renewal in your holy presence. We pray this in your many names. Amen. Dance and movement therapist Jessica Young has invited us into a new way of greeting one another when handshakes and hugs aren't safe, but we still crave that singular connection. All you have to do is put both hands together on your heart, then extend your open hands to another person. And while you do this, you look them in the eye and you say, peace be with you, or offer a silent wish of peace. Then. To receive peace, you reverse the gesture, receiving the gift with gratitude. So, beloved, peace be with you, and I receive the peace you're offering. Amen. I'd like to invite all of our young people and all of our people young at heart to join me at the screen now. Hi, we're back again. And today is the last Sunday of 2020. Oh my goodness, what a year it has been. Can you even remember January? I know it's difficult for me. It feels like it was like a million years ago. Maybe for you, very little feels different. Or maybe you feel like this year has kind of knocked us over, dragged us around a bit, and then maybe done a little dance on top of us while we're down. You like that? A little dance? My kids hate it when I dance like that. Uh, but for many of us, we've probably had both good days and bad days. Days when things seem to go okay. Nothing really seems too bad and other days when we could just crawl under a rock and wither away from all the feels. But there's one really important thing that I've noticed, and that's that you're here. If you are seeing and hearing this right now, you are alive. You have lived through plagues and politics through sadness and change and confusion and frustration and more. And look at you, all living and stuff. You go, you. You're awesome. I can't say what next year is going to look like. I can hope it goes differently than this year. But my prayer for each of you is that you remember how strong and how capable you really are. Keep being your awesome selves. 2021 is going to need you. Usually, I ask if we can pray together. But today, I'd like to ask if I can pray for you. God of all things, be with our young people. They are amazing in every way. They make me proud every single day, and I feel certain they make you proud as well. Help them to know you love them exactly as they are and guide them to be their most authentic 
and happiest selves. Your world, our world, needs them. In your many names, amen. By now, we are just a few days away from 2021. And with that new year comes a chance to turn over a new leaf on this year that contained multitudes. And for most of us, we don't mean that in a good way. I know I'm eager for all the possibility that this new year brings. A vaccine and an end to this pandemic. A new sibling for our two-year-old daughter, Phoebe. A return to some version of life together in person. Let's hear what God says in the book of Revelation about the hope and possibility of starting anew. A reading from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 6a from the Inclusive Bible. Then I saw new heavens and a new earth. The former heavens and the former earth had passed away, and the sea existed no longer. I also saw a new Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down out of heaven from God, beautiful as a bride and groom on their wedding day. And I heard a voice calling from the throne, Look, God's tabernacle is among humankind. God will live with them. They will be God's people. And God will be fully present among them. The Most High will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death, mourning, crying, and pain will be no more, for the old order has fallen. The one who sat on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. May these words be to us our light and our life. Thanks be to God. There have been so many moments throughout this past year when we have collectively said, I can't wait for 2020 to be over. And yes, there is the obvious. COVID-19 has impacted every one of us, whether it's meant the loss of childcare and in-person interaction and volunteer opportunities, or the loss of jobs and income and purpose, or the loss of health and loved ones. And our collective reckoning with racism has forced us to do a lot of long needed hard work that's been amazing. But the path to get there and the tragic death of George Floyd that accelerated the journey for many of us has been unbelievably painful. The division sowed before and during and after the November election has been nothing short of destructive. And even beyond these national and international events, I happen to know of an incredible amount of personal tragedy in our congregation, unrelated to all of this, but heightened by it all. It would be terribly easy to say, don't let the door hit you on the way out 2020. But I think a quick goodbye without any kind of reflection is a huge missed opportunity. We have gone through too much together to not learn from it. And as we hear in scripture, the old thing has to pass away and be grieved before the new thing can come into being. So I wanna bring back my star word from 2020. To fill you in if you've started worshiping with Mac Plymouth over the past year, or to remind you if you've lost track, each year around this time, we distribute star words to our congregation in worship. They give some guidance, like the star gave the wise men, the magi, as they journeyed during these days between Christmas Day and Epiphany. We reflect on them throughout the year, post them somewhere we don't forget, and reflect on the year that was through the lens of our stars once we get to the end. My star for 2020 was 
giving. When I pulled that star, I honestly felt a little resentful. We just received a difficult diagnosis for Phoebe and my life revolved around complex elimination diets and medications and specialist appointments for her. I was looking forward to a full and vibrant church year with lots of plans already in the bag. A fantastic youth mission trip, a creation care themed justice camp for the junior hires, working with Isaiah on a renewed fight for paid family and medical leave in the legislature, a women's retreat on gender, just a lot to get excited about, and a lot of challenge thrown into the mix. To receive this star giving felt like a punch in the gut. What do you want me to give myself to, God? I wondered. How can I give more of myself to my family, to this place, to my passions than I already am. While, of course, 2020 didn't go the way any of us planned, we had to let go of and grieve so much of what we were looking forward to. And my giving star took on new meaning. Because suddenly all of us were rethinking what it meant to give to one another. As hard as it was on that fateful Friday, March 13th, the session voted to suspend in-person worship due to the pandemic. And while that maybe doesn't feel like a gift, it was a decision made to give the best chance of health, well-being, and survival to our congregation. I give thanks for the courageous members of our session and our COVID adaptation team for making hard decisions that truly were and continue to be in the spirit of giving and that model, that continue to model for all of us how, in fact, scaling back our activities is perhaps the most giving thing we can do for one another right now. When the pandemic hit, it also became clear that the political and economic systems we have in place here in our country are failing us. As I saw the sacrifice of grocery workers and delivery drivers and childcare providers and in incredible ways, healthcare workers, I found myself grappling with the giving that was required of so many people who were going underpaid, unrecognized and fundamentally unsupported. Our organizers at Isaiah called together an interfaith coalition of clergy from across the state of Minnesota for regular calls and training, where we collectively came to recognize that the sacrifice of individuals is no replacement for a government who cares for us, and that sometimes valorizing these incredible sacrifices distracts from the giving that is really needed, a shared sense that when we all do better, we all do better. And the willingness to collectively work together for that beautiful future. Yeah, you could definitely say that my star got me thinking. And after this year, I won't look at what it means to give in the same way ever again. Some of you shared the ways your stars impacted you this year. Janet shared her stars of focus and freedom from the last two years, reflecting that they remind her to make the main thing the main thing. Such an important reminder during a year full of invitations to get distracted or spiral into despair. Kira's star was sharing in 2020, which she said reflected not just the sharing of gifts and time like we'd normally think about it, but also sharing her grief fears and frustration in new and more vulnerable ways. Vern's 2020 star was hope and what a year for it. We needed that this year. Kate's star healing was especially meaningful for her. She reflected that she never would have imagined how much healing would be a central part of this year. And Lauren shared her word love, saying, This word has been incredibly meaningful to me in 2020, more than I could have imagined, though perhaps not in the way I thought or hoped it might be. 
No, I have not found love with a capital L, but God is good and her message has been clear. I have learned a lot about love in 2020. In this season of Christmas, while we look back to the year that was, we also celebrate all that is possible with the coming of Jesus Christ into the world and all that is tender and vulnerable and uncertain about that new life too. We hear these words from the book of Revelation, envisioning new heavens and a new earth. The Most High will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death, mourning, crying, and pain will be no more. For the old order has fallen. That vision is powerful. I think about Mary and Joseph in that stable with their newborn baby, with everything ahead of them and no idea how any of it was going to unfold. I think of 2021 in much the same way. We have an opportunity for a fresh start, a new beginning, an opening to co-create a world with far less pain and suffering than the one we live in today. But how all of that will unfold is eminently uncertain. It all feels very tender and precious. I kind of want to cradle it like that newborn baby in the manger. But even within this uncertainty and this tenderness, we can have a vision. We can approach life with intentionality. If we want to live a new way, we have to imagine a new way. So this year we have stars again. Only this time I mailed them to your homes. I hope they made it to you in time. I invite you to find your star if you know where it is and read the word printed there. See if it inspires new and powerful visions for the year ahead. Or if it prickles you or makes you ask some hard questions. Whatever reaction you have is an invitation from God into a way of approaching and encountering 2021. Check in with the closed Facebook group if that's someplace you like to connect. I'll share some about my star there. And uh, I am actually going to choose my star right here live on camera. I've got a whole bunch in here as you can see. What's it gonna be for 2021? My star for this year is perceptiveness. Interesting. I'm going to have to think about that invitation. I'm looking forward to seeing where that's going to lead me this year. Beloved, we have made it through a hard year. Thanks to God's faithfulness and the support and care that we have shown one another. Let's celebrate, vision, imagine, and embark on this journey of the next year together. God truly is making all things new, even us. I can't wait to see where it takes us. Amen. Thank you.
Good morning. Welcome to worship in the season of Christmas at McAllister Plymouth United Church. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We are delighted to be able to worship this way with you, and we want to especially welcome those of you who might be visiting online for the first time, or maybe you tuned in for Christmas Eve and came back for more. We'd love to hear from you and connect. Please reach out at the email addresses listed at the bottom of your screen to get in touch. I want to highlight our upcoming worship services because they are going to be special. On January 3rd, we celebrate Epiphany, and you can anticipate another star-studded, glittery worship service right here on YouTube at 10 a.m. Then on January 10th, we'll worship together once again, but in a different way. You'll still come to our YouTube channel for the service, but you won't see the usual stuff up here. Instead, my cohort from the Next Generation Leadership Initiative will be leading online worship for each one of our 15 congregations across the country. This continuing education program of the United Church of Christ was designed for pastors under age 35 and in their first five years of ministry when they start the program. Now, in our fourth year together, we're finishing our core curriculum and heading into independent study projects. Our worship service will share with all of you some of what we've learned during our time together. And uh, I have to say on a personal note that I can't wait for you to experience the worship leadership of my beloved and talented colleagues. I'll be one of three team preachers for the service on the 10th. On January 17th, we'll observe Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and please do mark your calendar for January 31st when we'll be having our annual meeting on Zoom after worship. If it's anything like the congregational meeting to amend the bylaws, it will be an amazing time of connection and celebration of the year. As always, please continue to check in on your weekly here and now for the most up-to-date opportunities to connect, and learn and grow and be in community together. I invite us into a spirit of prayer as we lift up the joys and concerns of our community. Today we pray from our prayer tree. As we are compiling this service weeks in advance, there may be snow on the ground today and there may be incredible joys to celebrate or terrible sorrows to mourn. We come with all of it today here at this tree that has taken us through nearly four seasons together. Let us pray. God of new possibilities, we thank you for all that is continuing to open to us over these days. We thank you for vaccines and for medical professionals working hard to save lives. We thank you for the start of a new year. We thank you for celebrations that happened in new ways this year, making meaning in the midst of it all. We offer this silence to you, O God, as we lift up our own thanks and praise. And yet we know there is grief and sorrow. There is loss and transition. There is much in our world that needs healing. So bless us, O God. Guide us by your star. Make us new the way you make all things new. Help us to see new possibilities. 
uncover new comforts and show up for one another in new ways. We offer this silence to you, O God, as we lift up our own sorrow and grief. Make us a dwelling place for your love embodied. Remind us that God with us also means God within us, God among us, God surrounding us. Make it Christmas not just in our celebrations or in our homes, but in the world. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, 
You have given us the gifts of your only begotten Son and your continued presence in our world. Gifts the likes of which we can scarcely comprehend. Let us honor you by offering these humble gifts. May they be dedicated to continuing the work you began those many Christmases ago. This we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We receive these words, words from Jan Richardson's poem, The Map You Make Yourself. You have looked at so many doors with longing, wondering if your life lay on the other side. For today, choose the door that opens to the inside. Travel the most ancient way of all, the path that leads you to the center of your life. No map, but the one you make yourself. No provision, but what you already carry and the grace that comes to those who walk the pilgrim's way. Speak this blessing as you set out and watch how your rhythm slows the cadence of the road drawing you into the pace that is your own. Eat when hungry, rest when tired, listen to your dreaming. Welcome detours as doors deeper in. Pray for protection, ask for the guidance you need, offer gladness for the gifts that come, and then let them go. 
Do not expect to return by the same road. Home is always by another way. And you, know, you will know it not by the light that waits for you, but by the star that blazes inside you, telling you where you are is holy. And you are welcome here. Beloved, may the peace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born.